Go bombers! See the bombers fly up, up to, to win the premiership flag. Our boys who play this grand old game are always striving for glory and fame. See the bombers fly up. Essendon to the right again. Essendon going without a traditional centre half forward here. 1993 was a was a great year. Uh, it was a great year for the club in terms of uh, a great blend of our younger players and some older players, um, and we just seemed to get on a roll. and uh, And that roll just snowballed, particularly in the second half of the year. We had a great captain in Bomber Thompson, and uh, he just held the group really well together. And um, yeah, we were lucky enough to to get the ultimate prize. It was a big lead up to the Adelaide game. Adelaide had been in great form and we'd just beaten uh, West Coast the, the week before. And like any prelim final, it sort of uh, uh, inspires the, the whole of Melbourne. It was a little bit of the uh, Victorian versus South Australian, I suppose, mentality back then. And, you know, the Crows were a great side, had a lot of great uh, individual talent and were a great team that year. So we knew that we were going to have a big game against Adelaide. Chance for lip tack first goal round the ball. Just seemed in the first half they were kicking goals from everywhere. Uh, they were certainly inspired. Handball wide for long. Backs himself. Michael Long was a brilliant footballer and, and I think uh, that final series really really showed what a great player he, he was, not only for, uh, for Essendon but for the game, the way he brought uh, other players into the game and used his speed and his skills. We were 42 points down at half time and we just had to be desperate. We started to kick a few goals going our way so we certainly didn't want to let Adelaide kick any goals so yeah we just had to be desperate. A lot of bumbling balls that we just had to dive on, tap it out, whatever it sort of took at that stage to, uh, to keep Adelaide out from kicking goals. Darren Buick in the last quarter, um, once again, he, we were 12 points down and he, he set the scene in the last quarter. He, you know, he kicked a great goal from the forward pocket down the punt road end. It was a set shot and um, he, he just had that ability to do magic things, Boris, and particularly at the right time. And, you know, that was his day on, uh, on prelim final day. Well, it's Buick. Pretty good kick for goal. The last quarter was, uh, was was a lot of pressure you're playing to get into a grand final and uh, you know you're tired. Um, both teams were tired and it was just desperation. When we hit the front it was you know great excitement. A, a handball from Tim Watson to Gary O'Donnell to go in and into open goals and just hit hit a great running goal, you know, it just lifted the whole team. Gets the handball away, Maynard gives it the long, long stages. Watson important, O'Donnell should go, goes and hits it through. The are in you know, David Brown had the footy for the Adelaide Crows and, and typical Gavin Wanganeen just was able to come out of nowhere and lay a superb tackle, put the ball down, uh, rebounded back to Tim Watson. Tim Watson, who was pretty tired and a real inspiration for his teammates that year, put the ball on his boot, went forward about 30 metres, then he followed up his own kick. Set half back for Adelaide. Very important possession. Watson's got it. Watson goes. To get the last kick in the game was it was uh, quite exciting, but at that stage of the game, all we wanted to do was just hold on to the footy. Um, I think I ended up Chris in it, kicking it to my great mate and Chris Danaher, and I think he took a chest mark. To hear the final siren was great relief to all the, the players and, the, and our supporters. That's it. 
dead set gone at half time, no way out. And it's been one of the most remarkable games. These days I'm the development coach at the Hawthorne Footy Club. I've been there for four years. My biggest passion is helping young players come through and you know, I coach the Call the Cannons um, for a few years and also the Coburg Tigers. It's a great thrill to see those guys do well at AFL level or even sometimes VFL level. You know, they go on and be really good VFL players. So, yeah, it, it is. It's a great, great position to be in. And congratulations to Sheeds, who will be involved in a thousand games, both as a player and as a coach on the weekend. What an amazing achievement. Gumbles, it's been a tough couple of weeks for the footy club. What's been some of the messages and themes coming out of the coaches this week? Yeah, it has been a tough couple of weeks, but the coaches, coaches have been very positive in uh, what they're trying to get, get through to us, and they just keep go back to basics and do everything that you can to attitude and things like that, and focus on your defence, and also just be positive and out, out on the ground. We've obviously had a number of injuries to our key forwards and you've been a lone hand up front. How good is it to have big Michael Hurley back with you this week? Yeah, it's going to be great to get Hurls back. It's obviously have another big target down there is going to be a massive bonus for us and obviously the form he was in before he did his hamstrings uh, was outstanding so it'll be good to get him back and hopefully at that form. Now Gumbles, I want you to be very honest here. It's Essendon supporters and members and me and you that will only hear this. Is this true that when you drive <laughs> you have to wear a hat a beanie or anything else that you can put on your head so you can concentrate if there's a little bit of precipitation in the air or there's traffic is it true to help you concentrate uh yes it is true <laughs> <laughs> i always have a hat, hat in the car that i that i put on when driving and if it's not there i uh tend to find anything else that i can put on my head like what uh, like, would it, like a t-shirt maybe would yeah, you wrap like your head a in a t-shirt wrapped up t-shirt or <laughs> <laughs> whatever i can find spiky mate have you got any pre-game rituals uh, no, I'm actually pretty good. The only one I really do is I, I go out for breakfast every morning and have a bowl of porridge, but nothing, nothing major. What about any other players at the club? Have they got any uh, silly superstitions? Uh, there's a the story about Angus Monfries, how he used to cut his ankle tape up and write his possessions on it and keep it under the, uh, oh. under the bed, but he always denies it, but I think, it's, I think it's true, and I think everyone knows it's true. Getting back to footy, as a forward, who do you think's been the best forward for the footy club this year? Oh, it's a tough question. Obviously, everyone's had a little stints when they when they've been in. Obviously, injuries have uh, hasn't had had a we haven't had a forward that's played so many consistent games. But obviously, when Paddy was down there, he was playing well. Crammers was playing well. Hells was playing well. He was down there. Froggy was up and about for a long time. Leroy's defensive pressure is great. So, I think it's just a, a consistent group that's just going to get better and better the more games they play together. Matthew Egan, the forward line coach, has had a huge impact on the footy club. How have you found him um, moving into his role as a forwards coach? Yeah, he's, he's been great. Obviously, the first half of the year where I wasn't playing, he always, he was always, I was always up in the, uh, in his room watching Vision, and he was giving me advice. And it's just great to always feel a part of the group, although you're not playing. Gumbles, outstanding as usual, and thank you very much for joining us on the Hangar, and good luck for the rest of the year. Thanks, Spikey. Good on you, mate. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this has been a Fox Footy production.